All righty. So uh, here we go. The next step in the process. So we have talked about our central limit theorem and how we can take a sample and we can uh, make that uh, applicable to a population that our mean should be roughly the same and our standard deviation changes. Um, so from there, we're going. If you look at a poll, um, you know, you, we, as far as uh, let's say the percent of people, um, percent of people that voted for Joe Biden. Uh, a student population, I think I saw, were what, 51%, 52%? Uh, maybe it was it more than that. They may remember the student poll that we did the when we voted. I don't remember. But um, we can take that percent, and what we can do is then we can create an interval because we know that uh, we're going to find that middle of my uh, interval. That's based upon, you know, we said 54% of the student population voted for Joe Biden. Uh, and then we can take then find a standard deviation and go three standard deviations up or down. And that would therefore give us an interval where we would feel confident. So like when you see a poll and they said they give you a margin of error for the poll. OK, like the, it might be an approval rating of what was it for uh, Trump's final approval rating was what, 42, 41. OK, with a margin of error of three. So that means that it could have been anywhere from 44 to 38, okay? And, and so that's the process that we're starting to go into as far as creating a confidence interval for an estimating a known value, okay? Is how we're headed on that. So um, that's actually uh, what our first little topic is here. That, then that's basically what we're talking about today. Um, two types of estimates for statistics, okay? The first one's gonna be called a point estimate. It's that single statistic based upon a sample. Uh, so uh, some examples, uh, I actually didn't even write down examples, but uh, so um, what happens is we're gonna find, this is our, our um, I don't know what I even have examples there for, but a point estimate is gonna be the middle of my interval, okay? The other one's gonna be called the interval estimate. Okay, that's gonna be the range of values. So um, therefore, it, uh, we just have to be able to explain the parts that go with the interval. So down there in the bottom, we have a box. The box does not have a star, although it should have a star. And just remember the star are things that you're gonna to have to be able to do on the AP exam. So, um, for example, the first one, and again, understanding the difference here, one, we are interpreting a confidence interval, and the other one, we are interpreting a confidence level. So they have two different, two different uh, interpretations, and we have to know the difference between those interpretations, okay? Um, so in a confidence interval, we are 95% confident, and 95 would be an example. We are some percent confident that the true proportion in context lies within the interval of blank and blank. So when we talk about intervals, typically we're talking about being 90% confident, we'll be 95% confident, or we'll be 99% confident, okay? So one of the things that we have to get down as far as confidence, if I wanna be confident that I captured the true mean, do you think I have a wider interval or a narrow interval? The more confident I want to be, the wider my interval is gonna to need to be, okay? And that's just one of the things that we need to kind of grasp the moving forward. I just thought I'd introduce it today. We'll talk about it more later, but um, that's how that works. So an example statement might be, we are 95% confident the true proportion of patients experiencing renal failure while on dialysis lies between 0.03 and 0.08. Okay, so that included the three parts that we're gonna need. I'm gonna see somewhere that you said 95% confident. I'm gonna see that somewhere you included context and then I'm gonna see the interval listed somewhere. Okay, so when I grade your interpretations, those are the three things that I look for, okay? You told me how confident you were, you told me what you're confident about and what that interval was. That was the interval, which I find the easiest. I sometimes struggle a little bit with the level, okay? Because the level is, is the level at which we want to be successful. So the method used to construct the interval will produce intervals that contain the true proportion of context blank percent of the time, okay? So I, we forgot that word of context. So if I redid that example, okay? The previous example, the method used to construct the interval
of patients experiencing renal failure while on dialysis will capture the true proportion 95% of the time. Unfortunately, that was a really wordy one. The, typically, they go a lot faster than that. Patients experience, I didn't even cross my T, patients experiencing renal failure while on, di while on dialysis will capture the true proportion 95% of the time. And then what we have to do is uh, what happens is this chapter, we're going to do we're going to do intervals for proportions and a hypothesis test for proportions. Next chapter, we'll move into intervals. So then you got to pay attention. Wait a second. Did I do a mean or did I do a proportion? Because again, the, the words you use matters. Okay. Uh, on your AP exam, you will always be asked to interpret any confidence interval you create. So it's never going to, it's going to ask you to estimate what the given proportion of people that prefer Papa John's over uh, Papa Murphy's. Okay, so we would find and we would create that interval, but then we're going to be asked to then interpret what we found. Okay. Uh, on the multiple choice, uh, you should be expect to answer a question to select the correct interpretation, which I absolutely hate. Uh, as far as that goes, because there's always some little fine little detail about the response that made it not accurate. So a lot of times these are the methods that you would see. These are all correct statements relating to a 95% confidence something. Okay, so like the first one's going to be a level. Uh, the second bullet is going to be an interval. Uh, the third one, again, is a little bit, again, like a level out of 100 samples, 95 of the intervals will contain P. Um, again, those are the, that's just the, the things to expect uh, uh, when we do this, okay? When you construct a confidence interval, there's only two possibilities, okay? So either, um, Mike, uh, again, the, uh, and I don't know, think back to that, we didn't flip a coin, so obviously we did something previously that didn't do flip a coin this year. My interval is either going to contain the estimated value or it's not going to contain. So a lot of times like uh, we'll do the difference between two things. And if that difference is zero, a lot of times we'll do Z is zero in the interval. Um, if we're trying to estimate, uh, actually we'll, we'll create an activity, we'll do an activity on Monday uh, where we'll estimate the, uh, the true, pro is the true proportion contained within that interval or not. So it either contains the, the value or it doesn't contain the value. So. Uh, we'll almost, it's kind of like a hypothesis test once we get there. But anyway, we only have, we only have one example to do today uh, and then the rest of it. So uh, the rest of it we'll save for uh, another time. So uh, example one, the Pew Research Center and Smithsonian Magazine recently quizzed a random sample of 1,006 U.S. adults on their knowledge of science. One of the questions asked, which gas makes up most of the Earth's atmosphere, hydrogen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, or oxygen? A 95% confidence interval for the proportion who would correctly answer nitrogen is 0 0.175 to 0 0.225. So the first two are going back to what we have to be able to do. We have to be able to interpret the confidence interval. Okay. So we are, and if we go back to that, I mean, one is on, on your homework, we can just go back and you can fill in the blank on that statement. Okay. It's statement one. Okay. But we are 95% confident. The true proportion of adults correctly answering nitrogen as the most abundant gas will be between 17.5% and 
22.5%. And that's just something, we, again, just starting to get down that process, okay? It, it has the three things that I'm looking for. So again, 95% uh, confident, uh, we have context, and we have the interval, okay? So those are the things that I, and, and I had to go for. Okay, all right, interpret the confidence level. So again, if you go back to this, the, again, it's a statement. We are 95, the, the level is the method used to construct the interval will produce. And there we go. The method used to construct the interval of adults Um, correctly, adults correctly choosing nitrogen will capture the true proportion 95% of the time. All right, C, we're gonna calculate the point estimate and the margin of error, okay? So again, going over the, the point estimate is gonna be the middle of the interval. Margin of error is the amount on both sides. So uh, there's a lot of different ways we can go about this. I know right now that if I looked at a number line over here is gonna be 0.175 and over here is gonna be 0.225. I have to figure out what is gonna be the middle because my point estimate is gonna be there in the middle. And then I'm gonna have a margin of error to the left and I'm gonna have a margin of error to the right. Okay, that's what we're looking at. So how do I find the middle of two numbers? Dang it, I hate these headphones, I can't hear. Did you say average? We're gonna average the two numbers. So my, I'm gonna take 0.175 plus 0.225, and we're gonna get a zero, we're gonna carry the one, nine, 10, we're gonna carry the one, we're gonna get four. So if we add those together, we get four. Half of four is two. So that means that my, my point estimate equals point two. Two. So I know that the center of my the my center of my thing is point two. Now uh, finding the margin of error is a personal preference type thing. As far as how you can do that, uh, we can figure out the. I could, if I wanted to, figure out my margin of error. I could take uh, point two two five and subtract away point two, and that's going to leave me with. 0 0.025, so uh, I know that uh, I, my margin of error is just gonna be that difference between the end and the middle. Uh, the other way you could do the margin of error if you wanted to, and I'll change the color to a different color, uh, is we could find the distance across there. We could go with 0.225 minus 0.175. So that's a zero and this is a five, and this is a zero. And so now that I have the distance across there, I could split that in half. And if I folded that in half, I would be left with a margin of error. So then 0 0.050 divided by two is gonna give me a 0 0.025. And I got to the same margin of error that way too. Okay, so again, it's a personal preference on how you want to find a margin of error from an interval. What?
Uh, yeah, A M T. It's the amount. Amount on both sides. Yes. Sorry. Not that you could read that's amount, but yeah. And here's the whole principle of how we're going to start using a confidence interval. If people just guessed one of four choices at random, about 25% should get the answer correct. Does this interval provide convincing evidence that less than 25% of all US adults would answer the question correctly? Explain your reasoning. So given the fact that I can flat out just guess and get it right 25% of the time, but my interval is 17.5 to 22.5. Is this convincing evidence that we can't even guess it right? That we don't, uh, what's the question asked? Is, does this interval provide convincing evidence that less than 25% of the population would answer that correct answer, answer correctly? And our answer is gonna be yes. Because the entire interval is below 25%. So then just a precursor to what we're gonna do down the road, we're gonna say Professor X at DePaul University says that uh, he estimates that 18% um, of the population knows that nitrogen is the leading gas in the, in the Earth's atmosphere. Does this interval provide sufficient evidence to support his claim? And we would say, Yes, because 18% fell within the interval that we calculated. So that's, again, a precursor to what we're doing. Uh, we're actually going to, we'll do an activity on Monday as well as get into notes on Monday. We have a five-day week next week, right? Yeah, so, all right, we're going to